Good day, I'm Samantha Allen and this is your GIS News for Friday, October 4. Governments push to grow the economy through established agro-parks is bearing fruit. On a tour of the Amity Hall Agro-Park in St. Catherine on Thursday, the Portfolio Minister pointed to a number of crops including onions and peppers for the local and export markets. Minister Clark revealed that animal feed imports have decreased as a result of a decision by Caribbean broilers to use sorghum as a substitute for corn in animal feed. So far, they have planted nearly 150 acres. There's another 400 acres prepared to be planted. They were just waiting on the season. Um, the rain has come and they're going to go into production with that. The Amity Hall Agropark will also focus on growing and preserving grass for animal consumption. The minister, meanwhile, gave an update on production at two of the other eight agroparks. In the planting garden area in, in um, St. Thomas, we just finished reaping onions and we are preparing now to put some in. Pumpkins are now um, growing. Ebony Park, that one is on stream, onion. Um, as a matter of fact, um, Ebony Park, we are, we are experimenting with the mini set growing yam technique. Um, we have reaped some there and the, the results are very, very, very encouraging. In the meantime, Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips says he's pleased with the initiatives being taken to use agriculture as part of the growth strategy. The local production of crops and livestock is a key component of the government's economic reform program. We want to encourage all the farmers, small, medium and large, to look at these new prospects and to look at new types of crops, you know, such as your sorrel and your pepper and your Cassava. Farmers are also being urged to utilize the technology available to increase food production. The Ministry of Technology is pursuing several initiatives to promote entrepreneurship among young people. A business startup workshop will run from this Friday, October 4 to Sunday, October 6 at the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, PCJ's Auditorium. State Minister in the Technology Ministry, Julian Robinson, says local and international experts will guide participants on how to transform an idea into a product or solution. This is one way that we are collaborating to provide the facilitators because we know we have an abundance of raw talent in Jamaica, but to provide the facilitators to move that raw talent into products and ideas which are bankable and which can become businesses. Another initiative is Digital Jam 3.0, set for January 2014. Minister Robinson was addressing the awards ceremony for PCJ's website development competition. A five-member team from the University College of the Caribbean won the competition and walked away with $250,000. Their design will be integrated into the PCJ's website. Jamaican companies will get several opportunities to learn how to increase their productivity during Productivity Awareness Week from October 7 to 11. The week-long event being hosted by the Jamaica Productivity Center is being held under the theme Productivity, Pathway to Competitiveness and Growth. Activities include a two-day conference next Tuesday and Wednesday at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, an exhibition, a poster competition for students, and panel discussions. Some of the things that are important starts first in the mindset and the attitude of and the culture that lies within our country and so advocacy is one of the biggest um, drive that we have. Miss Nelson was speaking at a recent GIS think tank session. Interested persons can visit the Jamaica Productivity Center's website at jpc.com.jm or call 922-1598. And finally, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller will lead tributes to former Mandeville Mayor Cecil Charlton during his official funeral on Sunday, October 6. The service will be held at the Northern Caribbean University's gymnatorium beginning at 10 a.m. In a statement, the Prime Minister said the former mayor was an outstanding Jamaican who dedicated his life to public service and served with distinction. She added that Mr. Charlton left a rich legacy, which included 38 years of service to the Manchester Parish Council. Cecil Charlton Charlton died on September 12 at the age of 88. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Samantha Allen. Thanks for watching.